rejection phase, like I said, in summary, can last forever for a lot of guys. There's not enough money in the world to change things here in the Philippines. for a walk and just happened to pass by that sorry sorry store right there that was my old Suki and her and her husband have both passed away unfortunately sad to say I miss them so we've had to move on to another sorry sorry store they were our main one and they carried everything what we wanted. We made sure they were always stocked up for the things that we needed. So I think today I'm gonna walk out to a place called Oakland. There's another sorry sorry store. There's another sorry sorry store. Good morning. I'm not sure how many sorry sorry stores are in this village, but there's a lot. I never could understand how people could make money. They don't make money, they just etch out I live in. I was going to go back to a place called Opong. I did a video on this years ago. Um, and I haven't been back here for years. Uh, it looks like people have actually been building back in here. Uh, this used to be all jungle. But there's a structure there. And here's another structure here. And, uh, yeah, that was the beginning of the jungle there. Looks like people are encroaching on the jungle. These are... This is all deed and titled land from what I understand once before. Um, here's another, another house. It was not here before. Looks like people are <laughs> stealing guardrails for fencing. Tell me what I'm not find back here. In any case, I uh, was online this morning and just happened across a, a forum where somebody uh, shared a link or shared a post from somebody um, about there's three levels of uh, there's three levels of uh, there are three phases of life in the Philippines. First phase is euphoria. When most guys get here for the first time, they, they have this uh, euphoric feeling of paradise. Uh, it's so much so that it causes them to make decisions. Sometimes not the best decisions, but like, hey, I think I'm moving to the Philippines. They could be here for a week or two and uh, decide, make a decision that they're moving to the Philippines. Um, which is understandable. I was euphoric first time I came to this place. But I didn't make my decision for 20 plus years later. Uh, the second phase is uh, rejection. The rejection phase is the phase where the foreigner uh, comes to disagree with everything that is uh, done the way it's done in the Philippines. And a lot of times for good reason, but it is what it is. There's a saying here, Bahala na. Whatever will be, will be. It is what it is. And you're not going to change it. So you just need to learn to adapt and stop complaining. Complaining is not going to help. It's just going to make you an ugly old foreigner. Um, and people, sometimes people stay in that rejection phase 
for their, the duration of their time here. It could be years. They'll never at, exit that phase. But the best thing to do is get over it and get on with life and enjoy what the Philippines has to offer. And that leads to the third phase, acceptance. Uh, I think that's the term they used, acceptance. Just uh, accept what it is and learn to live with the happiest people on earth. It's just the way you should be in life. Now, I don't know what's going on here. This was not here before. You cannot. They can block this off. Somebody built a house right in the middle of the road that goes to the uh, the old beach. What the heck? Maybe there's a detour. Uh, let's see if I can find a detour. And here's one of them things that uh, it's hard to accept is the trash and pollution that's left behind by everybody. Um, that that part of the rejection phase will never go away. It's just it's beyond me why people dump their trash in the ocean, in the very ocean that they make a living off of. But once again, it is what it is. Now I've seen a trail back here that forked. So Ants or mosquitoes get me, I don't know. Fine mosquitoes. It's early. It's 6 30. The mosquitoes haven't bedded down yet for the day because the sun is not up yet. Here's, a, here's another trail. Maybe this will go around the house. Maybe. In any case. There's a lot of things that foreigners don't learn in their first few visits to the Philippines. The, uh, yeah, this trail goes around. Let's see if I can get back here without getting all bit up by mosquitoes. Gotta watch out for cobras. <laughs> Have lived here. Many, many years, and I've yet to see a cobra. I did see a cobra skin for a cobra shed one time, because somebody showed it to me. But there are snakes here. There are some dangerous snakes here. That's why I walk around in jungle with flip flops and bare feet. But getting back to uh, Accepting this culture for what it is. There's more stuff built back there. Man, this, this used to be pure jungle. I mean pure jungle. People have built residences back here. Maybe this land got sold. Yeah, I remember it was for sale at one time. And uh, many people thought it was way too much money. But I will surmise that it was obviously way too much money for people to build stuff like this. These people don't have money. Anyway, then back to foreigners in the Philippines. First time foreigners come here, uh, they see things that just excite them. <laughs> Number one on that list would be pretty Filipinos, obviously, but they, uh, they don't entirely understand the culture. Well, there's a young coconut, just fell. They don't entirely understand the culture. And that's not a good thing. If you're going to move to a country, one of the first things you want to do is investigate the culture and find out whether you could assimilate into that culture. And most guys, for example, most Westerners right off the top of their head will tell you, I'm not moving to a Muslim country because there's no way I could assimilate into that culture. Well, 
The same could be said about any culture in the world. I'm going to put this discussion on hold. Till we, I finally made it to a uh, place called Opong. And uh, if I didn't have to go somewhere this morning, I'd go for a swim. Yeah, this is looking pretty clean, except for a little bit of trash. The trash in the ground there, there, over there. But, uh, there's been some erosion going on because this beach used to come all the way over to here. There's actually a little bit of a beach here now. And there's a little bit of a beach over there. There used to be people living over there, if you've watched my previous videos. There used to be a riptide across here, and there was a raft that you could pull yourself back and forth across in that raft, and people actually would live over on the other side. I've never been on the other side. You could swim to the other side. But, yeah, this is uh, looking pretty nice. Pretty quiet out here. I made a mention in my video I posted yesterday. Yeah, Terry and I walked on the Kelbyag Bypass, and uh, that's around here. We walked on the bypass that goes around the city, and it's not quite completed yet. The road's almost completed, but the bridge is not completed. But when you get out there, you escape all the sounds of the city, uh, except for the waves crashing on the on the breakwater or on the on the rocks. Um, and it's the only place in Kalbaik City that you can actually escape from all the noise of the traffic, the roosters, the dogs, the karaoke, the just the noise. Philippine cities are very noisy. Um, everywhere you go, there's noise. It's just the noise permeates society here uh, in every aspect of society, unless you can find yourself a desolate beach or a desolate spot. Now, here's another desolate spot. Uh, the mountain. I've done a couple videos on that mountain. One of them was in search of gold, in search of lost World War II gold or Spanish gold. Uh, uh, however you want to say it, there was once gold on top of that mountain and you'll have to watch that video to find out. Anyway, it gets pretty darn quiet up there. But I'll say this wrong with my camera here. I'll say this place is pretty quiet. Uh, oh, now i got to find the path back out of here. But yeah, um, a couple years ago I came back here and this, uh, they were building some kind of a boathouse or some contraption here. It just looked, like it just took away from all the natural beauty. And uh, it's gone. Maybe the last storm took it out. In any case, back to uh, euphoria. When foreigners come to the Philippines, they get excited. They think, wow, this is a great way of life. But they, one, fail to understand the culture. Two, have no idea about the infrastructure here and all that it entails. And what I mean by that is uh, I mean, we live in the province if you live in the bigger cities it's not so bad but in the province you got a lot of those things and when you got a lot of those things trees uh, trees and power lines don't get along well so consequently we suffer a lot of brownouts power outages power outages um, and they say most of it's related to to down trees and stuff and uh, they'll actually shut the power off here for a day at a time 8 to 12 hours during the daytime and the reason they'll give is for line clearing well any place in the western world line clearing is done with bucket trucks and with the power lines still energized not here they de-energize the lines so they can clear the lines from 
tree branches and all that. So anyway, we go without power for extended periods when that happens. Uh, and then there's just the unexpected brownouts. Just had one last night. It lasted about 10 minutes. But when the power goes out, you never know how long it's going to be out. Could be 10 minutes, could be an hour, could be three hours. And without power in the Philippines, if you're acclimated, if you're not acclimated to the heat and humidity, and that's another topic, uh, you're going to be miserable. With no fan, or no moving air, uh, and no air conditioning, you, it can be downright sultry and, and just almost unbearable. And then, uh, for example, here, look, we're in the middle of the jungle. We're right on the coast. There's not a lick of breeze. No air movement. And that's, uh, that's what's really bad. But most foreigners don't understand that. When they get here, they they get treated like a tourist. They get pampered. They get sat under a fan or an air conditioner. And uh, they get a manicure and pedicure. And the girls take care of them. And, uh, as long as they keep showing out the pesos, they get well taken care of. And they think it's like, uh, uh, they think they're living like a king. But that party does end eventually, as a lot of guys find out. A lot of guys come here and blow their wad, and they're stuck here for a while. I'll get some traffic on the trail. Good morning. Oh, you guys live out here? You living out here now? You live here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Last time I was here, there's nothing here. Okay. The only word he understood was yes. And that's, that's oh, that needs to be another thing. Foreigners, when they hear about the Philippines, it's a country that's westernized, everybody speaks English. No, they don't. Now, if you get around the more educated areas where there's college towns, Manila, Cebu, uh, any of the major universities, you get around those areas, you're going to find a lot, of, a lot of younger folks that do speak English. But I guarantee I can walk around this village right now and I'd be hard pressed to find anybody that spoke more than 10 words of English. That always kind of surprised me because they teach English in the schools here. But you know, after after a certain level of uh, English, and at certain level, grade levels, they stop teaching English and proficiency is lost. But what I don't understand is all legal documentation here is done in English. All advertisement here is done in English. There's English everywhere. But people just can't converse in the language. Well, that's... That's it for the uh, Opong adventure this morning. I think I'll take a walk around this way. See how many sorry, sorry stories I can spot on this street. I know there's like 11 sorry, sorry stories in that street. Give or take one or two. Could be nine, could be 12. I only have credit at one, thank you. I don't need credit at all these different stores. And that's how these stores survive. They live on credit. And uh, like the like the folks that I mentioned back there that passed away over the last two years, um, when they left this earth, they were owed probably thousands and thousands and thousands of pesos. They'll never get paid to them. Sorry, sorry, store. Are you new? Is that a new store? Oh, I thought, uh, I thought the foreigner owned this property. Yes, this is the former owner of this property. Uh, Adam, no, Adam, Adam's, Adam's, uh, Adam's friend? No, Adam. Yeah, Finley. The, Adam, I know. Australia. Uh, Norma's, Norma's son-in-law, Diva. Yeah. Yeah, okay. This so, is the original property. Of, of his we buy it in Nature. 
Are you the Are you the wife of the Australian guy? No. No, I'm a widow. You're a widow. Yeah. Oh, you're looking for a husband, huh? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people looking for husbands, huh? I don't think so. Oh no. My children is grown up. Oh, but still, you need companionship, no? Uh, if ever God give me, yeah, why not? you will take it, yeah. But I don't <laughs> look. <laughs> oh. If there's one coming, yeah. then maybe why somebody not? will find you. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen. Uh, what's his name? Uh, My name. I, the owner of this. Yeah. Aisa. That's yeah, Aisha. Cousin. What's your What's your husband's name? My late husband. No, the Aisha's husband. I, Alan. Alan, yeah, Alan. Alan. Yeah, I haven't seen him for a long time. Has he been back here? No. Yeah. The last time he, he came back when the church wedding. Oh, I okay. Think, or yeah. When they got married. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen him for since before the pandemic. I think it's been it, been a long time. Yeah. Okay, I just I knew this was his property, but I didn't know. So you're you're part of the family, huh? Before I had store here, like then I closed it during pandemic. Then over here, wasn't it over here? Yeah. Oh, over here. Yeah. I remember. Okay, but you're uh, part of his family, huh? Yeah. Family. Okay. I just didn't see this before, but yeah. How many how many sorry sorry stores in Tumalikas? A lot. Many, huh? Yeah. In the other side, there's a lot. In Purak too. Yeah. Purak the other close. side, they shop, they still been closed. Then they open it two store. Yeah. Wow, almost too many, yeah. huh? Okay. All right, good luck. Okay. Bye. Well, there you have it. There's too many stores. Too many sorry, sorry stores. Here's my nephew's place. He just sells money. And uh, my brother-in-law, there he is right there. Where are you going? Uh, Lenoy. Lenoy. For what? Buy, uh, cigarettes. Cigarettes? Yeah. You smoking now? No. Oh, for the... Oh. I just went to Opong. Huh? I just went to Opong. There's many, many houses out there. Yes. Why? It's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, you know, it's a... Uh, by uh, Opong. Hmm. It is a... Uh, Hey. There's no houses no, before. There's no houses there, huh? For, uh, yeah, piggery. Piggery. Yeah, in this area. It's a okay. piggery. They buy that property, or they just? Uh, buy a property. They, the people that buy that property, are they squatters. Squatters? No. Squatters. They're squatters. Oh no, okay. squatters. Are they buy it. Yeah. Where do they get the money to buy that? That's ex expensive property. One point five million. Fifty-five million for the whole property. Only for fifty. Woo! Oh, eight hundred. Huh? Eight hundred. Eight hundred per meter. Yeah. How much now? Oh, no, one forty. How much? One forty-five million. Oh, one forty-five million. It was eight hundred per meter before. Square meter. No. Now it's. What's the price per meter now? Huh? Price per meter. One thousand five per meter. So almost doubled. Double. Almost double. Yeah. Woo. Oh, how many sorry sorry stores in in Kumaligas? Seven. Seven. Sorry sorry stores? Oh, more than that. There's seven just on my street. <laughs> okay. See ya. Huh? Shut out. You're living in the Pacific. Okay. Thank you. This is the place where I got hustled. You guys took all my money. All these pool sharks. Anyway, Koya June is going to get some cigarettes for his little sorry sorry store that he's got <laughs> in the pool hall. I don't know if you caught that, but I just asked him how many sorry sorry stores were in the village. He said seven. Maybe more like 70. Seventy. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, there was just three in this street. Three sorry sorry stores we passed, and we're just getting started on this street. There was one up here that we used to use. They had some products that our main cookie didn't have. <laughs> and uh, we don't use it no more. Morning. 
Hello, sir, Andy. Good morning. Are you guarding the store? Yeah. Yeah. How many sorry sorry stores in Tomalegas? Uh, I think one, two, three, four, something thirty plus. Thirty plus. Yeah. Yeah. I, it feels like seventy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> many many. Yeah. Yeah. Too many, huh? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Look at this. Good morning. That's about the most accurate answer I've had. Close, or the closest to the most accurate answer I've had yet. Thirty plus. And I know there's like six or seven just right past that corner. Okay. It's time to head home. I need more coffee. Uh, yeah, we got seven stores just on this street right here. One here, one here. Two down that way. Two down that way. One here, one across the street. And then one down at the end of the sea where it used to be. So. When you, when you run out of credit at one store, just go to another. They'll give you credit. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody will give you credit. Especially at Warner. They know your money's good. Most more, most foreigners anyway. Okay. Dogs are congregating on my corner here. What are you guys doing? Don't be peeing on my lawn. I used to, uh, back in the day when I had a lawn, this is all grass. Uh, and I just got tired of maintaining it. It wasn't the fact that I had to cut it all the time. It was that every animal in the barangay would come here to poop and pee. I had ducks, chickens, dogs, cats. Everybody was using my green grass as a as their comfort room. Ah, I'm back at the ranch. Coffee has been replenished and I'm gonna cool off with the help of my trusty AC. Um, just a little walk out to Opal and back this morning. Got me a little exercise. I mean, about maybe not quite two kilometers total distance after I meandered around the village a little bit. But so in summary, uh, I started this conversation out with the three phases of uh, of how people feel in, in the Philippines: euphoria, rejection, and acceptance. And uh, the rejection phase, like I said, in summary, can last forever for a lot of guys. Uh, it will never go away. They'll never accept the fact that the way things are here are the way they are. It's not going to change. Nothing you can do changes things. Uh, there's not enough money in the world to change things here in the Philippines. Now at the speed that which we'd like it to change. But then again, if it does change, then it's not the Philippines no more. So that's one thing you have to understand. Uh, the Philippines is attractive for, for all the reasons uh, that a lot of foreigners complain about. Uh, if you ever get to the acceptance phase, and arguably I would say that, yeah, I, I think I'm there. It's taken me many, many years. Uh, I don't complain nearly as much as I used to, uh, except when I get served warm beer. Then I complain. I'll complain to Terry, and she'll just give me that one little stupid, crazy looks. Stop complaining, she'll tell me. 